Hello, hello. It's a uh, beautiful Wednesday morning. Sun is coming up. And uh, just took out the uh, three of my uh, right hand drive mini cars. The uh, center one and the one on the far left are K cars from Japan. Uh, one's a, uh, the green one, the midget two is a 96 single seat cab over miniature pickup truck. The one in the middle is a 1987 Suzuki Mighty Boy, little miniature pickup. And then over here we have, uh, these were imported into America, not this particular car, but these were imported into America from like 1964, I believe, to 1980. Um, of course, uh, none of them had right-hand drive. This is a European British model from England and uh, get the right hand drive and the uh, B29 leather bucket seats the uh, back then they had a factory um, option slotted uh, wheel rings that went behind the uh, hubcaps all oh, that's new Chrome is not too great. It's the chrome's okay. It's daily driver chrome on the bumpers. Runs really nice. Starts, runs, drives perfect. All of them actually do. This one I just picked up about three weeks ago. From uh, I ordered this one directly from Japan. It's the first time I ever order a car from from far away like that. You know, mostly you get them from America. This one was from Japan too, but the gentleman that sold it to me <clears throat> already had a. Uh, uh, Georgia title for it so it was a lot easier to register it this one here wasn't bad it was pretty easy to register what was the kind of the pain was getting it ready for the arrival to the US Customs with all the uh, brokerage and extra fees and this and that it actually the car was 20 just under twenty five hundred dollars and by the time I got it right here to my house it was like uh, Another twenty eight hundred dollars. So the car's about stands me about fifty three hundred. I've changed the plugs and I've uh, removed a couple of dents on the side, and I'm waiting on some tune-up parts. Uh, <clears throat> the rotor cap, rotor fuel filter, and uh, the original air filter all to come in from Japan. It was like over two hundred and twenty dollars for those items I mentioned. A lot of money. I managed to match up a oil filter from one that was available here in uh, at the local pot store. So that was pretty cool. Like a four or five dollar filter that spins right on exact dimensions as the one that came off. You know. Anyways, uh, that's what we got today. It's letting them uh, letting them breathe, get them out of the dark, gloomy, moldy garages or whatever. Shake off some of the. The dust, you know, starting them up. I might take one for a ride today up and down the street. <clears throat> they're all registered and insured, so they're ready to roll anytime I want to drive. But I usually don't find myself driving them much. More or less a collection. No need to hurt the babies, you know. Speaking of collection, uh, we have the 66 Mustang with a real nice straight body. Six cylinder, factory air conditioning, all original. I got it running real nice. I got all the pots for the interior in the house, all purchased, front bumper, everything new, ready to put on and start on that. But to get that going, I have to first finish what, I, what I've started, which is the 73 Corvette. This I've been working on since last September. We just got the brand new radiator, radiator support, radiator hoses. The radiator shroud, everything's brand new, as original, except for the aluminum radiator. The radiators were not aluminum back then, but the original's right there. It still held water and everything, but it leaked sometimes. After you took a little ride with it, come back and you'd see it spitting a little bit of juice on the ground, a little bit of antifreeze on the ground, you know. After a few trips, you have to top it off with a, you know, like a half a gallon of antifreeze. That's not good, so... I gotta glue on that seal, that rubber, foam rubber seal that goes over the top of the radiator support in order to uh, seal the uh, upper hood 
so the induction system can work right. We're going to put the hood on today after I add the antifreeze. Well, the antifreeze, and then we'll uh, start it up, warm it up, bring it up to temperature, see how it does, and then we'll, uh, everything's a go, we'll put the hood back on, line it up real nice. Yeah, this is a pretty nice car. I only paid $6,500. Can't beat it with a nice leather. They're called Deluxe Interior. All I done was polish up the, the leather and replace the uh, oil pressure gauge, and I got the clock working. Uh, what else have I done? There was a missing little cross flags emblem on this door handle. I got that. I put all brand new weather stripping along the doors all the way around. And I put new weather, uh, what they call it? This is be called the C post, the rear post, windshield, uh, door post. This is new on both sides, and I gotta buy the ones for over here for the A pillar. They're all cracked and charred, you know, need to be replaced. All the, all the rubber. The uh, door sills are new. Uh, got new speakers in the back. The original radio works really nice. They already had holes in the back for speakers, antique ones, so I replaced them with 5 inch, which were hard to get, vintage speakers with the old school metal mesh grill. Yeah, this is a power brake, power steering, power windows, telescopic steering wheel, tilt steering wheel with air conditioning. So it's it's a the only option it doesn't have for that year was the uh, luggage rack. And nobody likes those. At least I don't. It's awful. You don't you don't uh, you don't put luggage on a rack and drive around with a Corvette. You know this is like your secondary car. You use the minivan for that. You know, but. I added a secondary mirror, a uh, right side mirror, and I got some wiper blades coming in, and I'm going to purchase a, the wiper motor seems to be clicking, it's not really ro rotating, so I might get a whole new motor and the uh, windshield washer pump mechanism that goes, like sandwiches, it sandwiches the motor, drive gear, and the water pump, the water washer, windshield washer rather. All together, I'm gonna to buy the whole system. It's about not cheap. It's about a buck sixty, but you know, can't leave it like that. You know, everything's got to work. You know, that's how I do it here at my shop. Everything's got to work. But uh, we got the uh, belts all back on, and I'll tell you the trick. This um, <clears throat> to put to put this new cowl on was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, a lot of guys like to cut them. The one we removed was cracked. They actually broke it, separated it so they could get it in there and left it like that. This is a brand new one, very expensive piece. But as you can see, it has the extension piece on it and everything, we managed to get everything in. But it was a little bit of a trial and error type of situation. Um, my secret was to leave everything loose, including the condenser for the AC, the radiator support, and also the brackets, the top brackets off on the radio. So the radiator, everything was loose. And what we did was just kind of deflect it forward, push it forward where it, it kind of, the uh, condenser kind of touched a little bit up against these uh, vacuum um, units for the headlights. But we had about a good, as you can see, a good two, two inches or so. And then we removed the little studs and uh, the fan belts and the... Uh, the pulley, we removed all that in the fan, and we managed to slip it in. I mean, it was a tight little slip, but we got it in, and then once it was in, we just bolted everything nice, secure together, put the fan back on, put the belts on, tightened everything up. The alternator was removed and pushed back. The uh, upper hose was taken off, we, we put that back on, and now it's all set. But it did take a while, it was a structural replacement. It wasn't an easy in and out, thank you. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It was a real, like, Jesus Christ, I'm getting the slam, you know? <laughs> but uh, it's in, it's new. Uh, it looks nice. I don't really like aftermarket stuff. I don't like that aluminum showing when it didn't belong there. I don't like the square-edged, non-polished beads on the welds. I don't like any of that. But for it to, uh, to function and drive, 
that's the way of the world right now, aluminum radiators. I did have the original one that I bought was almost six hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Looked just like the original that came out with copper and brass, but unfortunately they don't make this lower outlet correctly. They make it straight, and you can't get the damn hose to to fit in correctly without kinking. So they're all doing that. I don't know why, but even this one here, the hose, if you can see it, but probably not. But the hose down there is, it's on, it's complete. I had to cut it and trim it, but uh, oh, it's a pain in the butt, you know. That's the vacuum side too of the water cooling system. So it's very snug. It's uh, even the shroud kind of con makes contact with it slightly, but that's how it was back then, I guess. Anyways, oh, we're heading out for breakfast. I hope you all enjoy your day. It's a lovely day here in Statesville, North Carolina. And uh, hope everybody had a nice Easter. Take care. God bless. And bye for now.